Hello everybody, welcome to the video on the force of gravity and gravitational forces. The gravitational force is a force of attraction between two masses separated by any distance. In Newton's law of gravitation, Newton states that there exists a force of attraction between any two masses of any distance. The magnitude of this force is directly proportional to the product of the two masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance apart. This is the most common qualitative description of the gravitational force. Quantitatively speaking, the gravitational force can be described by the following equation. The gravitational force equals to g, which is the universal gravitational constant. This is 6.67 times 10 to power minus 11. This number will be very useful in our calculation questions later. This is then multiplied by capital M and smaller m. These two represent the masses between which the gravitational force is present. This is all divided by r squared, which is the distance between the centers of the two masses. The masses are in kilograms, and the distance apart is in meters. And you can see, again, the equation clearly outlines the relationship between the gravitational force and the masses as well as the distance apart. The gravitational force is directly proportional to the product of the two masses. That is, if the masses are heavier, the magnitude of the gravitational force is stronger. And it is also inversely proportional to the distance between the centers of the masses squared. So that is, if the distance between the masses is increased, so if the distance here becomes longer, then the gravitational force becomes weaker. They have an inversely proportional relationship. There are some key properties of the gravitational force you need to know. The first one is it is that it's universal. The gravitational force acts over an infinite distance. No matter how far apart two masses are positioned apart, there'll be always a force of attraction between them. Again, the gravitational force is always an attractive force. The force is acting on the mass is always towards the mass that's producing the gravitational force. Every object with mass will produce and is affected by the gravitational force. So as you're sitting here today watching this video, you're affected by the gravitational forces produced by the object with masses around you. The main gravitational force is of course the weight force, and that is produced by the Earth. Heavy masses, like our Earth, planets and stars, they will exert a much larger and stronger magnitude of gravitational forces. This is because the gravitational force is directly proportional to the product of the two masses. And since the mass of planets and stars are relatively larger than normal objects around us, that's why the gravitational force magnitude is much stronger as produced by these planets and stars. Discuss the following situation with regards to the gravitational force. If the distance between two masses is doubled, find the change of the force. So we know the gravitational force is equal to capital G, m1, m2, divided by r squared. If the distance between them is doubled, we can substitute 1 into the masses because they're unchanged, and this will be divided by 2 squared. And this will give me a expression of g over 4. Now, since g is a universal gravitational constant, this is, this is also just a number, so you can see here, the gravitational force has become smaller by a factor of 4. Smaller by a factor of 4. If the mass of one object is doubled, find the change in force. So again, likewise, we can use force equals to g1. So we can keep 1 for one of the masses, and we write 2 for the other mass and it's divided by 1 squared because the distance is unchanged, and we will get 2g. So this tells me the force is doubled in magnitude as well. Calculate the gravitational force that exists between a 70 kilogram person and a 1000 kilogram car that is parked 2 meters away. So the gravitational force is equal to the gravitational constant times by the two masses in kilograms, divided by the distance apart squared in meters. So the gravitational constant, as we saw earlier, is 
times 10 to the power of minus 11 times by 70 kilograms times by 1,000 kilograms divided by 2 meters squared. And this gives me roughly 1.17 times 10 to the power of minus 6 newtons. So this is the magnitude. And as we said, the direction of the gravitational force is always attractive. So we normally write towards one another. So this will be towards the car if we're talking about the person, and the direction will be towards the person if we're talking about the car. Calculate the force of gravity that is exerted on Earth by the sun. Use the following information in your calculations. So the force exerted by the sun on the Earth will be equal to the gravitational constant times by the mass of the Earth times by the mass of the sun divided by the distance between them squared. This is equal to the gravitational constant, still the same number as before, times by the mass of the Earth. So this can be found in the question 6 times 10 to the power of 24. But remember, mass of the Earth can also be found in the Nessa data sheets. So times by 6 times 10 to the power of 24. And we also have mass of the Sun, which is much larger, as you can see. And this is all divided by the distance between them which is 1.5 times 10 to the power of 8 kilometers. Remember that our distance must be in the SI unit you know, of meters, so I'm going to times this by 1,000 before I square it. So times 10 to the power of 3 to get the meters, and then squared. And this gives me 3.56 times 10 to the power of 22 newtons. And as you can see, the magnitude of the gravitational force is much larger than the previous example because the masses of the object that we are talking about, which is the Sun and the planet Earth, are much heavier in size and mass. In terms of direction, because we're calculating the force of gravity that is exerted on the Earth, the direction here will be towards the Sun. This can be better visualized by drawing a simple diagram. So this is the Sun, this is planet Earth, and there's a force of attraction between them. So this is gravitational Fg, this is gravitational Fg. The magnitude of the two forces here should be the same. They should be both equal to this number here. But the direction you can see are opposing each other. The question is asking for the force of gravity exerted on the Earth by the Sun, which is this vector here. So this is towards the Sun. If we're talking about the force vector or the force of gravity exerted on the Sun, by the Earth, it will be this vector here. The same magnitude, but will be towards the Earth instead. Gravitational field strength is the acceleration that is caused by the gravitational force. Every mass has a gravitational field, and this allows us to understand how the strength of the gravitational force can vary depending on the distance from the center of the mass that's producing the field. As you can see, the gravitational field of planet Earth can be simply visualized by these gravitational field lines. The density of the field lines, that is the distance between them, represents the strength of the field. As you get closer to the planet Earth, the strength of the gravitational field will increase. And as you go further out from Earth, the gravitational field will decrease. However, any masses that fall within the vicinity of this field will be acted upon by the force of gravity. But the magnitude of the force will depend on the distance from the Earth and also the mass of the object itself. The gravitational field strength is also known as a gravitational acceleration, which we simply call gravity. And this is usually 9.8 meters per second squared. And we'll have a look at this number in a moment. This is the gravitational field acceleration experienced by a mass at a particular point in a gravitational field. So the force of gravity is the force that's exerted on the object, whereas the gravitational field strength is the acceleration the object experiences as a result of the gravitational force. We can derive an equation for the gravitational field strength by using Newton's second law. If we take the force of gravity formula and we replace the force with mass times by acceleration using Newton's second law, we can cancel out mass on both sides of the equation. Now, this mass is mass of the object 
of which the acceleration we are trying to determine. And this will give us acceleration equals to the gravitational constant times by mass divided by r squared. Normally, in the context of the Earth, this is our g value, gravity. We can use the formula and substitute all the variables in there to calculate this value for gravity. So if we substitute g as the gravitational constant and the mass of Earth as 6 times 10 power 24 kilograms, and divided by what we call the radius of Earth, this is on average 6.371 million meters, and we square that. And the value we get is 9.81 meters per second squared. This is why the value for gravity is normally assumed to be this number, as this is the approximate average value that we can calculate by using this equation. The most important concept you need to take away from this equation for gravitational field strength is that the value for gravitational field strength or acceleration is not a constant number. It depends on two things. It is directly proportional to the mass of the object that's producing the gravitational field, so in this case, let's say it's Earth. It is also inversely proportional to the distance squared between the object that is Earth and the object that we are measuring the acceleration of. Since the mass of Earth remains constant, the main variable that we need to examine is this r variable, the distance. This distance here can be affected by various factors. This includes the distance from the Earth's center, that is altitude, so if you're measuring the g value on the surface at sea level versus at the top of a mountain like Mount Everest, the g value you will get will be different. Of course, on the surface of Earth, when you have a smaller radius from the center of Earth, your g value, that is your gravity, will be stronger, it will be larger in value. Vice versa, if you're measuring the g value at the top of a mountain, the gravitational acceleration will be smaller. The g value is also affected by the crust density. As we know, the crust is a very thin layer around the Earth's surface, but this changes in thickness and also the density. The thicker the crust, this will increase the distance the person or the object is from the center of the Earth. So thicker the crust usually refers to a smaller g value. Vice versa, if you have a thinner crust, this will reduce the distance and therefore increase the acceleration. The last factor is the most important one, and that is the shape of the Earth. Planet Earth is not a perfect sphere. In fact, it has an elliptical shape, where the distance across the equator is longer than the distance across the poles, the North and South Pole. So if you're measuring the g value at the equator, the distance will be larger, that is the radius of the Earth will be longer, so this will be longer radius, and this will give you a smaller g value. In contrast, if you're measuring at the poles, you will have a smaller radius, and thus a higher g value. This concludes the video on the force of gravity and gravitational acceleration.